so welcome back guys in this video we are going to discuss about point to point vans so what are point to point vans they are basically it connects to remote devices via a line available from a public network so we will understand it with the help of example for example telephone network so back in the days when we were using telephones there was a line that were coming into the house and it was just connected to a telephone via which we could talk to people so that was the example of point to point van that it was connect there was a line that was connected a public network which was a telephone network to our houses which was our personal telephone and through which we could talk to people or then example of this point to point vans are modem then there are dsl technologies then there is cable modem and then there are t lines sonnet we will learn through these technologies line wise so now the first is modem so modem is used for uploading and downloading from internet so how it does it that it converts these digital signals to these analog signals so digital signals are not suitable for transmission so what modem has to do that it has to modulate it has to modulate that digital signals into these analog signals so that it would be ready for transmission and it will be suitable for transmission so a data rate while uploading would be less and downloading would be the reason behind this is that while uploading we have to perform a phenomena known as sampling so what does sampling means is that to convert digital to analog so while we are uploading things we need to convert the digital signals to analog signals but while we are downloading things we not need, need not to convert these digital signals to analog signals so that's why downloading speed is more while uploading speed is less so now moving on to our next technology which is dsl dsl stands for digital subscriber line and it provides higher speed access in comparison to modem and it provides internet over the existing loop which means that in our house there were telephone line which was present so it provide internet over that same telephone line so that is dsl now dsl basically is a set of technologies which means it has a dsl present over here v dsl hdsl sdsl 
these all have their different jobs we would study it further and because of the it's a set of these technologies sometimes it is also called xdsl because there is the only difference of the first letter so instead of this we could also write xdsl now we will study this line wise so what is adsl adsl stands for asymmetric dsl so it provides highest speed when we are downloading things from internet and it provides comparatively lower speed when we are uploading so this is the first reason why we call it asymmetric second reason why we call it asymmetric it is it is not evenly distributed what it means is that if there are some residence area over here so in each of them the speed of internet would be uneven we suppose the speed of this is 1 mbps speed of in this house would be 2 mbps in this there would be 10 mbps so speed in each house would be different so that's why it is asymmetric first reason that it is the speed while downloading and uploading is not same and then it is not evenly distributed so as it has these two problems it can't be used for business purposes because in business we would require stability so it can't be used in business purposes so now as we are aware of the fact that dsl adsl can't be used for business purposes so we can use instead of adsl we can use sdsl it stands for symmetric dsl so as the name suggests that it solves the problem of asymmetricity which means that upstream and downstream speed would be same so as it provides the symmetricity or stability that the business needs it can be used for the business purposes now moving on to the next dsl parts which is hdsl and vdsl <clears throat> it's nothing but it provides high speed and it stands for high bit rate dsl and it provides very high speed and it stands for very high bit rate so that was all about the dsl now moving on our next technology is cable modem so what cable modem did it was that it instead of telephone it uses cable tv network so that was the major difference between earlier two things that it uses cable tv network for transmission okay so our cable tv network is of two types one is traditional and the other one is hfc which is basically our second generation cable so in traditional one what happened is that a video a video signal is broadcasted over an antenna and that antenna is present on the top of it 
and via that with the help of coaxial cable it is distributed in a community so that was our antenna that was used in earlier times and then there is hfc which stands for hybrid fiber coaxial cable so instead of coaxial cable it uses hybrid fiber coaxial cable in this there was antenna and in this there is a box such as in a house there is set of box so that is the example of hfc so for transmission the modem needs two devices which are cm cable modem that is present in our houses or users end and the second one is cmts cable modem transmission system that is present over the broadcasting place and one more point that the cable modem it's one way transmission that means that the video is only downstream it's a one way transmission so after cable modem moving on to our next technology that is sonnet so what sonnet is they are the high bandwidths of fiber optic cables earlier we used to use the coaxial cables here we use fiber optic cables so these are suitable for the today's highest rate technologies we need video conferencing our online classes online meetings and all those things so it is suitable for highest data rate technologies so sonnet stands for synchronous optical network so how it does it work is that it converts electrical signals to optical signals so another name for electrical signals in sonnet world is synchronous transport signals which stands sdcs and optical signals are same optical signals so there are some protocols under which sonnet works the first one is ptp which stands for point to point protocol what it does it it manage and control the transfer of data there is a data so we need something some protocol to manage or control the data that how much data is present how much data is going and all those things so here comes the point to point protocol and one more point that it is only suitable for single user that is one user then there comes the lcp lcp stands for link control protocol it is also used to maintain data then there comes the ppoe it stands for it is for the group of users the ppp one was for single users it is for group of users that were present over ethernet as the as its name also suggests that it stands for point to point ethernet so that was all in this topic thank you so much